the body came down the front straightaway last lap three wide going past Mike McLaughlin and another car looking for advantage on the blunt seafood Chevy nothing there he's up to 15th place won this race in 1991 one of NASCAR Winston Cup racing's best road race specialists so here look you really got to pick and choose your places to pass here you just can't go after them where you catch them well, on the road course, you have two or three things to worry about. One thing is not to unload the, the car going in the corner and get the tail end very light getting in the corner. You have to use the brakes very hard anyhow, but if you really extend to the use of the brake to get the front end sliding, then you go right off the course. Labonte takes Truex on this, the second longest straightaway here, and he pulls up on Johnny Benson, the ASA champion, celebrating his 31st birthday on Monday. And he's looking over Tim Fedor. Fedua now carrying the Luxair colors on his Ford, number 55. Bobby Dodder lost uh, 38 seconds, switching over to Scott Lagacy. That'll keep them on the lead lap. And also, Brett Bodine in for Tom Peck. We have something in common. I remember my 31st birthday. <laughs> and he's going to have his Monday. Into the chicane, or the inner loop, as they call it here at the Glen. The body being methodical and picking them off one at a time. Into turn five. Right on the back bumper of Johnny Benson. This is a good long straightaway, good passing opportunity here. As they come off this long corner and Labonte dips to the inside. Nope, look, <laughs> Benson's going that way, so Labonte cuts across the track and he'll take him going into turn 10. Well, he's on the inside. He'll go make this pass real easy now and gets back on the other side of the course to make his turn into turn 11 here. Let's go back up front for the moment where Kenny Wallace has caught Ricky Craven. These are two of the drivers battling for the Bush Championship. David Green second in points. Kenny Wallace third. Craven is the leader. You know, Mike, I'm sitting up here talking about this course like I was the greatest road course driver ever lived, but we do have a guy up here with us that's very talented on this racetrack. Maybe he'll tell me how to get around. <laughs> So here's Craven, back into the chicane once again, and Wallace bounced his car across the curbing there, upsetting it just a bit, and you see Craven open up about a car length right there. Boy, wouldn't it be nice if every driver had a brother that was as talented as Rusty Wallace and you could go in and get notes from him when you start to go to a road course? A tremendous advantage for, for Wallace to be able to go in there and talk to his brother Rusty and say, listen, this is what I need, and he gives him a whole sheet of things to work on. Agreed. You saw Scott Legacy there in relief of Bobby Dodder for a moment, and also Brett Bodine is in the car that he would have started in this race. Uh, but Tom Peck, who was in the top 30 in points, started that car. That's the only way they could get it into the show based on point standing. Now here is Wallace looking for the lead. He's got the line. He's got the lead. Boy, that was, he made that look very easy. Kenny Wallace is flying around this racetrack. He's also a very good broadcaster, but this kid right here, he's got all the tools, and you watch. When he moves up the Winston Cup the next time, he'll stay there. Kenny thought he had a good chance to qualify on the pole. So Craven running right in Wallace's tire tracks. Bit of smoke there as they come up toward the inner loop. And again, Kenny, he likes to bounce that left front off that curb there. And you see how upset the car gets when he does it. You see Hermie Sadler coming through there. He always runs very well. He says he really likes the road course. It reminds him of going to school. I just wonder what kind of school he went to that he went as fast as they go right here. No comment, huh? I wonder. <laughs> Must have been one that was a few miles from home. I'd say. He got in that kind of practice. He's moving up on Kelly Moore, who's the leading all-time winner in the Bush North Series now. Here's Sadler, looks to the outside. Moore doesn't leave many room there. And they're back to start finish, where Sadler has this long straightaway to work with. Boy, Kelly Moore has got some horsepower. Hermie yeah. to the inside. Yeah, not this time. Well, that was a smart move on Hermie Sadler's part. Don't run in there this early in the race and maybe get all crossways and maybe knock another guy out. He's got patience, and he has a race car that's capable of running up front. Uh, this is trouble here for Andy Santer. This is Brian Goey's Chevy, the primetime Vans car, and he's going to pull it off. Goey finished fourth here in his first ever Bush North race start last month. He finished in the top four. 
And uh, Andy Santer again had the points to get into the show. Goey did not, so Santer started the car. It looks like it'll be a short day. So Kenny Wallace leads Ricky Craven. And Kenny Wallace seems to really like running these road courses. But as Buddy pointed out, it seems that Kenny had a pretty good teacher in his older brother. Well, you know, I guess it was a deal where when I came into this, this NASCAR, you know, Bush Grand National Series, my brother Rusty was so dominant in the bias tire days and without the Jericho transmissions. And, uh, you know, when I came up here, he told me everything I needed to do step by step, and I, I ran really well. So uh, it became a, a passion of mine just to, you know, it's, it's a break from making left-hand corners constantly, and uh, it's beautiful up here in Watkins Glen. In New York, the car that Andy Santerra pulled off the course apparently did not get uh, uh, fully out of harm's uh, way, so zero. <laughs> they have, have brought the caution out here for the first time this afternoon. Uh, there's the primetime van Chevrolet that Santerra started because rookie Brian Goey did not have enough points to get into the show, but again, interesting story. He took this car here, went to Bob Bondurant School, Goey did, finished fourth here last month. He never raced at Watkins Glen. He, it was the first Bush North race he qualified for, finished in the top four. Well, I tell you, you know, it's a terrible thing to have happen this early in a race for any race team. But, you know, anytime anybody has problems on racetrack, it always benefits people. And the people right. that made driver changes just a little while ago are back up into the action again because they get to come up behind the pace car. Okay, couldn't make it all the way around to uh, start finish, so uh, they'll push that car back home. And word is that the Bobby Dodder car, now with Scott Legacy aboard, is going to pit. Another driver who's out of the race has joined us uh, up here in the booth. Uh, but, Tom Peck, you plan to be out of the race by right now, so it's uh, not unexpected to have you with us. Yeah, our plan was if everything went according to plan, I was only going to run one lap and start the car and uh, get Brett in the race, and uh, it worked pretty well. I was worried he's going to get lapped, but he's, he's in good shape now. Now, with the car that uh, is owned by Mike and Harry Greechy out of Connecticut that Mike McLaughlin ran last year and Brett Bodine uh, on most of the series, Brett was supposed to start this car and run it, but he didn't have enough points to get into the show, so that's why, uh, why you had to climb aboard. Yeah, it's kind of a close-knit family, and we help each other out when we can, and this was one time when they needed me, but the next time I'm, I might need them. Sure. So. Well, I just want to say congratulations on the way you drove in Myrtle Beach. You did a great job in the car there, and you were up in second place there when you had to get, get out of the uh, running, but uh, you did a great job in the car, and we hope to see you back on the regular tour fast. Well, you know, I'm getting impatient now. For a while, it was okay. I'm, I'm looking pretty hard right now. I need to get back into a race car. Well, it's good to have you up here with us. You've uh, you've run here before. Uh, this would be your fourth start, and of course you'll get credited with wherever Brett finishes, but you have one top ten finish in three previous starts. So what do you think of this place? You know, it's a place where we can come where there's not a lot of pressure on us. We can come, and it's like kind of going to a go-kart track to have fun. This is a fun-type racetrack for us. It's different than anything we ever do. Uh, you just go out and have a good time all day long. Let's uh, get down to the pits. Here's Glenn. Well, Scott Legacy has brought the DeWalt uh, tool car in to top it off with fuel. He was at the rear end of the pack anyway, so he didn't lose any track position. Here's Bobby Dodder, the normal driver and the car owner, and man, you couldn't have scripted that thing any better. Now we got real lucky to catch that caution. Uh, driver change didn't take nearly, it went, took a lot longer than what we'd expected. We never expected to come out right in front of the leader, so um, Scott's doing a great job. I think he can bring the DeWalt car home in first place if he gets the right brakes in traffic, but I just told him, most importantly, just bring it home in one piece and we'll be happy. And I'll guarantee you, Scott Legacy will do that. <laughs> okay, thanks, Glenn. We are under caution the first one of the day as they push Andy Santer's car back to the pits. We've completed eight laps. Terry Labonte's now up in the top ten, and Joe Nemechek, who started 34th, is now running 11th. We're under caution, and we'll be right back to Watkins Glen, New York. Here's how they look after eight of 62 laps. <laughs> 